this Mortal Kombat novel is kind of odd. Uh, I liked the book as just a story, because it's not a bad story at all, and it's told rather well. However, it's a very odd reimagining of the first Mortal Kombat, and aside from the names in it, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with the actual video game or any of the lore that was created around it. It's very, very odd. So the story starts out in a small village in China, roughly in the 400s, but the timeline isn't established, so I'm not really sure when this actually is taking place. We begin with Kung Lao. He's heading off to go discover something. It has something to do with an entity called Pan Ku. Don't worry, eventually he runs into Raiden, even though it's spelled differently in the book than it is in the game, which is just something you need to get used to, because that happens a lot. Then we switch over to Shang Tsung, where he where things get strange. Shang creates like this weird symbol and starts to summon demons into our world, which is not called Earth Realm anymore, now it's called Mother Realm. And we find out that he is actually a I think he's supposed to be a demon that was sent to Earth by Shao Kahn. And now Nether Realm is actually a kind of version of Hell. Yeah, things get strange from here on out. The other realms are never brought up. The other gods are never really mentioned. We get mentions of kind of lesser gods later on, but nothing else about anything that was really established in the first Mortal Kombat. And that was something I had to go back and check. It was kind of odd that they just sort of dumped all the lore and kept the names. And now it's just a, you know, good versus evil, light versus dark, heaven versus hell thing. So anyway, Shang Tsung sets up the Mortal Kombat tournament as a way to gather souls in order to widen the portal to hell to bring more demons into our world, and eventually bring Shao Kahn in. We don't know how many souls he actually needs, it's never mentioned. We do know that he's giving up a part of his soul in order to keep this portal open when he doesn't win the tournament for like nine years in a row. Oh, and the, uh, the whole rule about having to win ten consecutive Mortal Kombats in order to take over another realm, that's completely dumped because all the other realms are gone. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you really need to ignore the fact that this has Mortal Kombat on it and just sort of roll with it. So Kung Lao has this magic amulet, which becomes incredibly important to the plot of the book. I don't remember an amulet ever being mentioned in the first game, but whatever. So after the first Kung Lao that we're told, or we're told about, dies, 1500 years go by, and this is all still happening. Apparently the Mortal Kombat tournaments don't really frickin' matter, but they've been going on for the past 1500 years. It's weird. <laughs> like, really, really weird. Now Shang Tsung is looking for this amulet, which he thinks will give him the power to open the portal wider, because apparently the souls aren't working, so... Yeah. I really don't understand any of the rules that are being established in this book. So then, now that we've jumped 1,500 years into the future, now we get Liu Kang... Sonya, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and also Kano. They kind of join into things. So Liu Kang and Sonya work for the White Lotus Society. Kind of. I don't really know if Sonya is working for them or not. But anyway, they're trying to take down Kano. Kano has been hired by Shang Tsung to get the amulet. He's got a couple of people with him. They don't matter. Scorpion is just completely reworked in this. Like, just bizarrely 
reworked. Uh, Sub-Zero still kills him, but then a lesser god named Yu is responsible for merging Scorpion with his son, and they make this odd entity-type thing that now goes by the name Scorpion. And this made me look up what Scorpion's actual origin story was, just to make sure that what I was reading wasn't actually true. Yeah, it, it's very strange. Then at some point, all of the other characters from the first game show up. So Reptile pops up out of nowhere, Goro appears. They all end up together on like this mountainside where there's a few fights that take place. Eventually they meet the present day Kung Lao, because he's here in the present now. Yeah, it gets very odd. And then Shang Tsung uses some weird magic that somehow merges Kano and Kung Lao as one person, sends that entity off to go grab the amulet, and to make sure that nobody else can stop him, he says if you do anything, he'll kill both of them, and their combined soul will somehow make the portal bigger. This is something that's always threatened, that they're one soul away from making the portal bigger, big enough for Shao Kahn to come through. I really don't know how this portal works. It's very confusing. There's also a little imp that's apparently trapped within the portal that's holding it open who's never mentioned in the games because he doesn't exist anywhere outside of this book because it's, oh god. So anyway, they have this big fight after, you know, Kano and Kung Lao get separated and the amulet goes with Shang Tsung back to his island. There's a whole bunch of fights between the, our good guys, so Raiden, Scorpion, uh, Kung Lao and Liu Kang, and also Sonya, she's fighting them as well. And then eventually, Sonya does something that damages the little portal, or like the uh, marking on the ground that Shang Tsung had created, and that prevents him from talking to Shao Kahn now. And it also disrupts the portal, so they can't really close it, and it apparently might explode and destroy the Earth. At least that was my understanding of what I was reading. Then Kung Lao is able to trick Shang Tsung into explaining to him how the portal needs to close. Kung Lao closes the portal. And then the two sides just kind of go, well, I guess it's over. And everybody just leaves. Because apparently the island is under... Sh uh, Shang Tsung's rules, and all the good guys just sort of go along with that, and they leave his island, and all the bad guys stay on his island. And then the book ends. I... I didn't like the ending. <laughs> I thought it was really dumb. And... yeah. That's kind of where the story ends. So uh, I actually liked the story as long as I forgot that it was a Mortal Kombat book. And I thought the ending was pretty stupid because it set up a sequel to this book that doesn't exist. I really think this book needs to just be viewed as its own thing. Otherwise, everything really falls apart. Uh, especially when you look at it as it's something that's trying to retell the story of a video game that has a fairly well-known story to it. The first thing that I was really wondering about this is why Katana was missing from the story. And then I remembered they got rid of most of the lore and she wouldn't have fit in with a demonic invasion story. Uh, oh god, I forgot Baraka's in this. but. He is completely worthless to the story. He's there, and he's kind of like this weird 
demonic priest thing. So him actually being a different race is completely dropped from this. It, it's just very, very strange. So, as a Mortal Kombat book, I did not like it very much. When I ignored that it was a Mortal Kombat book, it wasn't bad. Like, it was kind of, it was okay. But as a Mortal Kombat book, it's, it's pretty awful. There were some kind of strange decisions that were made here, and it doesn't simplify things. It just sort of makes it even more odd, because I started asking more questions about, well, how come he hasn't been able to open this portal in 1,500 years? Like, he just hasn't figured it out? Or, like, why has he waited until... 1500 years have passed to try to find this amulet when he just seemingly didn't care about it for 1500 years but yeah it's it's a very very odd book uh if you're a fan of mortal Kombat and you just want to scratch your head or be confused then check this one out uh if you're not a fan of mortal Kombat, i don't really see a reason to look at this or pick it up, even though it is fairly cheap. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. Bye.